I'll get better. But here's the point. The point is it was already late. The day was far spent. And the disciples had the same mentality as some people. Let's just get out of here. Let's avoid the issues. Let's avoid the darkness rather than believe that the God who created the light and darkness and separates them could arise and do something supernatural. And so guess what he did? He arose and did some supernatural. He multiplied the five loaves and the two fishes right there, and he didn't listen to his disciples. But there's something also about 2022. I want you to go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. And then we're going to end with one particular thought pattern here, and we'll pick it up next week. This is also a year, 2020 true, 2020 new, about 22. It's also going to be about... The year the king remembers. We're going to look at that in just a moment. But it's also going to be the year I really sense of reward. Because if God defined 2021 as W-O-N, the year of victory, how many of you, you came to realize, wow, you don't get victory unless you have battles. And there were a lot of battles in 2021. So if we serve a God who is a warrior, Exodus 15, 3, the Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Isaiah 42 says, the Lord shall roar like a mighty man of war. Yea, he shall prevail against his enemies. So we know that God is a warrior. Revelation 19, Jesus is riding back on a horse uh, with a sword in his mouth, right? Two-edged sword in his hand, that's right. The word of God in his mouth and written upon his thigh are the words, King of kings and Lord of lords. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. That's why he's called Lord of hosts. Lord of angel armies. Well, why do you need an army if you're not a warrior yourself? So he's a warrior, and he's coming because of the battles that we faced in 2021, and we're going to see that 2022 is a year of reward or spoil. You don't have the battles at this level, and God who's never lost a battle and not have spoil, not have reward. Now, if you want to put your head in the sand and believe that there ain't going to be no reward, then that's on you. But at the end of the year and during the year, I'm going to be testifying about my rewards because I know what he's saying. But let's look here. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag in the third day that the Amalekites invaded the south and Ziglag were smitten and burned with fire. Now imagine David and his mighty armies are riding back to their home, Ziglag, and it's burned with fire. They could see the clouds. They could smell the smoke. And immediately their mind began to think what any normal human being would think. What is the condition of my family? Look at verse 2. And as they came, they, they had taken the wives, the women captive, and they slew not any of them, neither great or small. And they carried them all away and went on their way. Let's keep going. And David and his men came to the city, and they saw that it was burned with fire. They saw that they took their wives, their son, their daughters, were all kidnapped. This is a terrorist act. And David and the people that were there lifted up their voice, and they cried as grown men. And these were mighty warriors, and they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. And keep reading, but look what David did. Keep up verse 6, because this is a very powerful principle. People misquote this verse. And David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of killing him. Because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his son and for his daughters. But David did what? Encourage himself. People stop right there. Notice what it says, in the Lord. People say, well, he encouraged himself in the Lord. No, it doesn't say that. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Who's God? His God. The reason why through uh, 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 kidnapping, a terrorist act, their house is on fire, the whole city's burned to rubble, David could find hope. You know why? He encouraged himself not in God. That's a belief system. That's going off of what you heard somebody say, what somebody else experienced. No, David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Fast forward to Matthew 16. Jesus says to the disciples, who do men say I am? And every one of them could rattle off. Oh, you're Elijah. You're John the Baptist. Notice they started with those two guys. 
If Jesus was not a confronter, they would have never compared him to Elijah the confronter. When it came time to call down fire, Elijah confronted and said, "Uh, is your your God out going number two? That's the literal translation. (laughs) Mocked him. Elijah was a confronter. That's who they thought Jesus was. Ooh, John the Baptist, he wasn't nice. He wasn't a conformist. Neither was Jesus. And yet they said in Matthew 16, oh, some say you're Elijah, John the Baptist. Are are, are you? Because you sure act like him. Okay, take your nice Jesus and put it away for the year. I didn't say Jesus wasn't loving. He's not nice. Nice is a word that's not part of the fruit of the Spirit. Nice is... I feel bad, I feel obligated, so I'm going to give in and give you what you want. That ain't Jesus. He's going to tell you the truth whether he makes you mad or not. And he's going to say the truth in love. And he's not going to apologize. You never should get offended when someone tells you the truth. The reason why people get offended is because they don't want to face the truth. But don't be so nice that you never tell anybody the truth. No, speak the truth in love. So anyway, where were we at? He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Matthew 16, finally one man, Peter, stands up and says, uh, Thou art the Christ, you're the Son of the living God. And Jesus turned around and said these words. I'll help you, those of you that, that watch all the Jesus movies, know how he talks. Peter, and he doesn't blink. Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this, but my Father which is in heaven. Right? You watch Jesus of Nazareth. I've watched it. You know that one with the guy with the skinny arms? That wasn't Jesus. And, and, and he doesn't blink except one time when they, when they try to move him, his eye blinked. But never when he talks, he doesn't blink because it's, 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 it's not holy. Right? So anyway, he encouraged himself and the Lord is God. Now watch this. Let's keep reading. I want you to go down to verse 13. Look at what happens. And so he, he seeks the Lord in, in verse 7 and 8 and all that. And and he says, okay, Lord, what should I do? And God says, pursue, overtake, and without fail, you're going to recover all. In other words, there's got to be a battle before you have a recover all. And David said unto them, uh, all right, let's keep going. I I think that's the wrong verse. Anyway, it's uh, 16. I'm sorry, I said 13. They were going off of what I said. But look at verse 16. And when he brought him down, behold, there spread abroad all the earth, eating and drinking. That's what the, these enemies were doing. Dancing because of all the great spoil with their terroristic act that they had taken out. Wow. Now watch this. And the Philistines out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. Ooh, we're going to take out the enemy. And there escaped not a man, say 400 young men, which rode upon camels and fled. Now look at verse 19. This is the part and 20 that I want you to see. And David, verse 18, David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. That just sounds so wrong. (laughs) And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons or daughters, nor anything that had taken. David recovered what? But he didn't get that without a battle. 2022, Come on. you're not going to recover all or have reward or spoil if you wouldn't have had the battles of this previous year. Now, look at what David said. This is why you need an attitude. And David took all the flocks, all the herds, which they drove away, and David said as he grabbed it, this is David's spoil. Some of you, rather than rehearsing all the things that were lost, you need to say, no, devil, I demand it to come back. This is my spoil. This is my reward. You aren't going to mess with me. You're not going to push me around. You're not going to afflict my life, my family, my finances, my job. You will pay. It's my spoil. All right, let's go to the last thing. The last thing is, it's going to be the year that the king remembers. And I want you to understand something. I won't preach to you while I'm going to preach to you next week because this is good stuff. But I want to just touch on it. It's the year that the king remembers. And, and it's extremely, extremely important that you understand that when God remembers, it's not that he forgets. It's that he's ready to take action. 
Look at Exodus chapter 2. We'll close with this if they'll come to the piano. Oh, he's already to the piano. Do you want to sing together? Do you want to rap? What's that? No, I'm looking for you. Let's rap together. Are you ready? Play me some rap music. Where's this going to go? You don't even know how to rap, do you? Do you, do you even know how to rap? Come on, man. I can talk in rhythm. Okay. I don't know how to rap either. We could try. Yo, that's not rap. <laughs> Here, give me some. Oh, yeah. I want you to know as we go that there is something that is true all about you. You see, 2022, it shall be known to be true. Yeah, hey, I'm talking to you. And the devil shall be bound and brought under your feet to the ground because the Holy One shall arise and bring you a surprise. It's going to be a year that you don't have to fear because the king shall remember you. That was the best rap I ever gave, but what was that for music? It sounded like Lawrence Welk. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now there's time to rap. <laughs> you did fine. I'm just kidding, Brandon. Don't you love Brandon? Give it a hand clap for Brandon. He's a good guy. All right. Last scripture. Are you ready? Stand to your feet so then I'll be quiet. In Exodus chapter 2, this is out of the New Living Translation. 400 years, the children of Israel were in bondage under a socialistic, communistic government. Right? That's what Egypt was. They had to make bricks for them, and, and uh, they weren't allowed to have anything. And, and um, you think about what this scripture means here. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 23, years passed. And the king of Egypt died. Eventually, bad leaders go bye-bye. But, Israel, but the Israelites continued to groan under the burden of their communistic, socialistic life. Here's the thing. They had the wrong cry. That's why it took so long. That's why some people... Why do I never get a breakthrough? Because you keep groaning and crying under your bondage. I'm not healed. I hurt. Why does somebody else always get blessed and I don't? This is unfair. Life is unfair. It really is. Life is unfair. And sometimes life stinks. Are we talking to the real people here? But it's not... Why, or it, 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 let me say this, be very wise not to cry under whatever it is that you feel like is so great that you can't get victory over. That's what they were doing. And so they were crying under the burden of slavery. They're not supposed to be under, they're supposed to be over. Because the Abrahamic covenant was, you are above, yes. not below. Yes. They were living below. They are the head, not the tail. And they cried out for help, and their cry rose to God. And God heard their groaning. Why did God finally, after 400 years, hear their groaning? You think God can't hear? You think God didn't care? Again, it's the type of cry that you cry. It's what you're saying. But notice what happens. Notice the next word, God heard. I'm telling you in 2022, God is hearing. Because a lot of us are crying out right. Whether it be for America, whether it be for the earth. Come on, we're crying out, we're starting to get it. Lord, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to get in fear. I'm not going to get in anxiety. I'm not going to talk negative. I am absolutely going to remind you of what you said and put your covenant before your face, our covenant before your face. Now watch. God heard. Next thing. He remembered. Now, 
what did I tell you? Remember, did God forget? God not pay attention for 400 years? God was waiting on them. He remembered his covenant. All he was waiting for is for them to say, God, you said in our Abrahamic covenant yes. with our father Abraham, here we are under Marxism and socialism, and you said that we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not below, but Lord, we're, we're below. And if they would have rallied together, who knows what would have happened. But it took 400 years and God had to orchestrate a plan to raise up a deliverer. But notice it said God remembered. What does that mean? It means God was ready to take action. And he did. And he said, he remembered his covenant, notice with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they didn't. And he looked down. So not only is God hearing, he's remembering, but now he's looking, he's seeing, he's watching, he's poised to take action. And he noticed the people, and he knew it was time to what? Now, why was it time to act? You got to read the word ahead of it. He what? He remembered. And because he remembered, now he was going to follow up with action. What am I saying to you? Before the new year, get your cry right. Get your cry right. Don't you be carrying your squalling and bawling and disappointment and fear into the new year. You need to settle that before you come here on New Year's or before you click online. If you're upset... Listen, I let a few things known to God this morning with Pastor Brenda. There's a few things. And the only reason why I did it is because as I was getting ready to receive communion with her, I was like, Lord, I just want you to know there's a couple things that just kind of, it just bothers me. And it wasn't not even something that was even part of my life, but it was somebody that I knew and something that happened. And I said, Lord, it's just, you know, I don't like it. And I want you to know how I feel about it. But nevertheless, I look to you and this is what I, and I started rolling off all the victories. I got my cry adjusted. And as you do, you align yourself with a very powerful year of reward. That's what I want to see for you. And even for America. Listen, can I tell you another thing? And we've, and we've got to be so careful. Listen, I'm on Flashpoint all the time. I got, I got to, I've got to watch this. A little, little sarcasm is okay because it, it helps people remind people of just really how uh, unjust what they did. We can never forget November 3rd. Okay, America was never the same after 9-11. It's never been the same after uh, November 3rd, 2020. But complaining about what happened, complaining about who is illegally in office is not the right cry. It isn't. And it could be why God is not yet poised to act. The remnant, get our cry right, yes. demand righteousness and justice, remind God who really won and has the right legal right to be our president. That's the right cry. And do you know what happens? God acts and he ends years and years and years of bondage. Heavenly Father, I pray, Pastor Doug, you're here. Father, I pray for every person in the sound of my voice that, Lord, we get our cry right, not a cry of unbelief, negativity, fear, anxiety. No, none of that, Father. No complaining. In fact, Father, oftentimes we say, well, God keeps score. And, Lord, it just so happened in the Old Testament, you said the people complained against me these ten times. Lord, you kept score. And it had to do with their complaining, their murmuring, the wrong cries. Lord, we don't want to be numbered among those. I pray from this moment forward, Lord, that our cry will be that which causes you to rise up and remember and be poised, Lord, for action. That we shall and will, without fail, pursue, overtake, and without fail, we're going to recover all. And it will be a year of great reward. And we shall be like David. This is our spoil. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Doug, thank you, God. All right. Give Pastor a hand.